On a pretty regular basis, students get confused about the identity option. I think the biggest reason for that is it should have been called auto number. If I was using Microsoft Access, it is called auto number, but in SQL, it's called identity. What it does is it automatically adds a integer value to a column whenever you insert a row of data. So for example, if I create a table in the tempdb called demo1 and on column 1 I put the identity option on column 2 I'll just put a just some character data. Once I insert into the table it'll automatically add a new auto number. Again, if this had been called auto number, it wouldn't be an issue. But because it's called identity, it's a little confusing. Now the idea is, is that column can be used to identify one row from another. So every time I run the insert statement, it just automatically increments for me, automatically applying a number, and I could use that number to identify one row from another. So that's that's the reason why the name is given that identity. But again, it does confuse folks. Now, if you'd like to find out what the last number, the last automatic number was on a given connection, in this case I'm on connection 63, you can look at the built-in system variable called identity or at at identity. That will tell you the last number used on a given connection. A different connection would have a different automatic number that was the last put or used uh, for inserting data into the table. Now, if you have a column with the identity specification on it, and you try to insert data manually into that column, doesn't matter what the number is, let's say I make it, I don't know, 55, you will get an error message. The error message is actually pretty clear as long as you take the word identity and replace it with auto number. Cannot insert explicit value for an auto number column in the table demo when the identity insert feature is turned off. Now this means that it can be done, you just have to turn the identity insert feature on and then you can do it. So that could be useful on occasion. I'm going to go ahead and look at the data. You can see that the 55 ID was never put in there. You can see that the B was never put in there. And the last number that was automatically generated on line 14 is 4. Now I'm going to insert C in column 2. Notice that I'm letting the auto number feature work. When I look at this, I'll see that 5 was added. Nice. So it just automatically adds the, the number for you. Uh, on certain occasions, depending on what type of error occurs, you may see it skip a number. In other words, instead of being 5, it may have been 6, depending on if like, I violated a constraint, like a check constraint or something. In those cases, then you have to manually either fix it by updating the numbers or adding a new number or just ignore it. The auto number feature is convenient but it's also, well, it's automatic. And if the automatically generated number is not what you want, then it's up to you to figure out what you're going to do with that. For simple basic tables, it's not a bad feature. Now, if I, um, if I want to use the automatically generated number in some other table or query or statement, I can do so. For example, let's say I have a second table and I'm just trying to capture what those auto numbers used to be or was. I can just use it as a value. Oop, wrong table. And now, if I look at this, I'll see that it captured value 
5 because that was the last number being inserted. The last number being inserted was 5. Now interesting, you can see that I'm getting no value. That's because an insert has occurred, but it didn't have an auto number. And as such, the identity uh, variable, system variable, is set to null. It's been reset back to null where it normally is, unless you actually use it in a query. So for example, if I go in and insert another one, it'll now be bumped up by 1, and that's 6. The identity feature is convenient, again, for small tables, but the amount of confusion it can cause may not make it worth your time. Still, it's certainly one that you have to deal with in the, in the world at large, in your, in your office. And so, messing around with it, playing with it a little bit, is probably worth your while. And if you're taking one of my courses, you'll probably see me use it. Not necessarily because it's such a great feature to have, uh, but because in real life you often have to deal with it. And hopefully this video helped with that.